More than 100 women have filed new lawsuits against USC alleging sexual misconduct by Dr. Tyndall. Some of those survivors shared their stories this afternoon. They talked about why they are coming forward and how their experience has affected them. I have decided to take my power back and however painful it is, I am facing what happened head on to heal, to be an example to my daughter, to help other victims and to prevent this from happening to others in the future. My experiences with Dr. Tyndall impeded my ability to seek medical help. When years later I was the victim of rape and assault, it also immensely impacted my overall mental health and ability to take care of myself in the years to follow. And I've struggled to understand why I was having a problem with simple things, not knowing that I was a victim of sexual abuse. Survivors called on the university to uphold the school's mission and support its students. We have yet to sense that support from the USC administration and the Board of Trustees. But it is not too late for this mission to be achieved. If there is a willingness to truly fight on for transparency, integrity, and accountability, we can make change happen. According to USC media representative Ron Makovich, the university is aware of the lawsuits. He said, quote, we will be seeking a prompt and fair resolution that is respectful of the former students. We are committed to providing the women of USC with the best, most thorough and respectful health care services of any university. A survivor in another well-known case was at USC today. Susie Placencia is here with more on her story. Susie? That's right, Sylvie. In 2016, gymnast Rachel Denhalander was one of the first women to accuse USA Gymnastics team doctor Lara Nassar of sexual abuse. Her powerful testimony paved the way for several women to come forward. For the sake of the survivors, she is urging USC and its board to take sexual abuse matters seriously. Well, I think today really is about two things. It's about hope and it's about a choice hope for the survivors that their voices are heard by those of us around the nation who are standing with them and a choice for USC whether they're going to stand with their Trojan sisters the women that they said were part of their Trojan family or whether they're going to engage in the same institutional protectionism that you typically see in these types of situations they need to be asking themselves the same questions that survivors ask what is the right thing to do is this right and to center their communications around this. Is this the right thing to say? Is this the right action to take? Does this represent uh, the right Trojan values? Uh, so when it comes to their communicating, is silence the right thing to do in the face of sexual abuse? No, it isn't. 